Great Lakes shipping had a tough year in 2020, and some in the industry have clear ideas about how the federal government can help. The Great Lakes is a system, and that's the biggest thing people need to understand, is it's an interconnected, in, interdependent system. Um, so what affects Duluth, Minnesota will affect Cleveland, Ohio, will affect Detroit, will affect Chicago. Eric Peace is the Director of Operations and Communications at Lake Carriers Association. The organization represents the interests of Great Lakes-based shipping companies and tracks issues facing the industry. I mean, we've been doing this for 200 some years and what's built up around the lakes is those facilities that can only take deliveries from our self-unloading vessels. We can operate and move one ton of cargo on one gallon of fuel over 600 miles. 240,000 jobs are tied to the maritime industry here on the Great Lakes. And those jobs are, are supporting the miners, supporting the, to the, the longshore workers at the facility, at the ports, anything from uh, the shipping, the actual vessels themselves with mariners on board. It's vital to our national security and our, and our national economy. Like most industries, shipping and related operations on the Great Lakes experienced a challenging year in 2020. The pandemic, coupled with a number of infrastructure-related issues, forced the industry to implement changes that could carry far into the future. 2020 was started off uh, in, in January, February, looking like a strong year for the industry. Um, and, and we were excited. Uh, it quickly shifted, as we all know, with COVID-19 coming into the United States. Mark W. Barker is the president of Interlake Steamship Company, which currently operates nine bulk carriers on the Great Lakes. We started actually mobilizing some of our personnel uh, ahead of normal, because once we got them on ship, we felt we could keep the ship safe. So by March, continued to fit out our vessels. Uh, we sailed uh, our entire fleet, uh, then only to have to lay up some of our vessels due to the shutdown, mainly shutdown of the auto industry, which then cascaded into the steel industry. The lack of demand for raw materials, while we understood what this pandemic would look like and how quickly we would recover from it. So yeah, our tonnage is down about 8%. Ian Hurt is Indiana Ports Director of Burns Harbor on Southern Lake Michigan. And the other thing that impacted us is we're one of the few ports that can handle ships on the Great Lakes as well as barges that come through the inland waterway. If you see barges on the Mississippi River, the Ohio River, or the Missouri River, those can come all the way to Burns Harbor. In Illinois this year, they were working on four of those locks. If we were gonna have a pandemic, it was good that it, it happened kind of while those locks were down because a lot of things, like I say, did dry up. That probably contributed to our being down 8% more than the pandemic, really. What we did have to do is our companies did have to get a little creative. We ended up laying up 13 of our 46 vessels at one point, which means they would go to the dock and wait for an increase in demand. So there's a lot of changes, a lot of dynamics looking at our procedures, our protocols. How do we need to change them? How do we need to modify them to keep everyone safe that was involved. The Lake Carriage Association, which is our trade association of the Great Lakes, none of its members at this point have had an outbreak on board of us. All in all, total tonnage on the Great Lakes was down 31% by August 2020 and would never fully recover by year's end. Shipments of other cargoes, however, like grain and wind turbine blades, were moving past the numbers from years prior, a bright indicator of growing international trade. We struggled through a difficult year here and we've all kind of sustained operations and we continue to move forward. You know, obviously we're gonna continue with having this pandemic issue for a while. I think anytime you face challenges in any, any situation, especially in business, um, it makes you look hard at your processes and it, and it also allows for change to happen somewhat quicker. And transportation will always find the cheapest route, then price is what's gonna drive it. And so we've really um, got to do all we can to remain cost competitive. Aside from the pandemic, another annual challenge requires federal support, fighting back the winter ice. Hopefully we get another icebreaker built here in the Great Lakes to operate on the Great Lakes. There's been ice seasons in particular 2013, 2014, um, and most, re most recently is 2019, where it's had a huge impact on the shipping industry, the ports, the facilities, to make sure that we can continue to move shipping here on the Great Lakes during the winter seasons. It's important to us that we can bring economic viability to the Great Lakes and economic benefit through shipping, but we also need to make sure we're taking care of it. Ian points to investments made under the Trump administration as welcomed surprises, 
and hopes the White House and Congress continue this support as the new administration gets underway. President Trump has very much done some things that you wouldn't necessarily normally expect from a Republican administration. So they've put a lot of money into infrastructure, provided the funding for the new lock at the Sioux. I'd like to think that President Biden will continue that trend. You're going to see Great Lakes economy continue to move forward, and the maritime industry will be front and center of that move forward in the economy. At Great Lakes Now, we aim to cover the Great Lakes region and the people who live here, like you. Please follow us on social media, subscribe to our YouTube channel, and sign up for our newsletter at greatlakesnow.org.